We've reached the holiday season again, and even though the pickings are a lot fresher this December, I'm still gonna take the month to look back at the games I never got a chance to review this year. And at the top of that list is Paradise Killer, an incredibly stylized open-world visual novel that puts you in the shoes of Lady Love Dies, the gumshoe of the gods, a disgraced detective getting called out of forced retirement because the people who fired her have all wound up dead. Paradise Killer is a murder mystery, and one that promises that literally anyone could have done it. No, really. Everyone has a motive, and regardless of the truth, you can probably find the right evidence to pin a crime on just about anyone on Island 24. The question Paradise Killer poses is who you'll pick, and for what reasons. But the real star of the show is the island itself. Between a jaw-droppingly unique aesthetic and some absolutely sublime world-building, Paradise Killer's setting oozes out through not only every location you visit, but also every line of dialogue and tiny trinket you discover on the side of the road, and it's absolutely what to come to this game for. As always, I'm Alex, and this is First Five, where ask if games are worth your time, not your money. I played a game for five hours, and I'm gonna tell you if those were five hours well spent. And I'm starting this year in review with one of the most visually striking games to come out all year, Paradise Killer. Island 24 is a truly mesmerizing blend of aesthetic styles, the Parthenon by way of brutalist architecture and a vaporwave aesthetic. Creek plinths and pillars support psychedelic goat-headed statues, all of it decorating a concrete slab foundation. Combined with all the fancy, over-the-top duds everyone's dressed in, Island 24 is an alien and opulent feast, featuring one of the most unique aesthetics I've ever seen in the game. It's all the height of decadence, almost as decadent as Paradise Killer's Diction. I have a bad feeling about this. Everyone on this island speaks almost exclusively in platitudes alternatingly grandiose, wistful, and cryptic. For a crew of what are effectively demigods, the personalities and certainly the aesthetic sensibilities are suitably over the top, and there's no shortage of enjoyable, noteworthy characters, from an ex-assassin turned cosmic cabbie to a goat-headed idol that trades secrets on the side. But as great as Paradise Killer's primary players are, the real magic here is in the world building. Remember that bit I said in my Mass Effect video just a month ago about how good character development and world building aren't mutually exclusive? The Normandy runs so smooth it feels like we're not even moving, and the engines are so quiet. How do you sleep at night? Well, Paradise Killer manages to blend the two with significant panache. When everybody on the island is a millennia's old demigod, history is intensely personal. And that history is an endless litany of gods beyond mortal comprehension playing with reality, ancient titanic wars that shook the firmament of the earth, and grudges that have festered for centuries. Everyone has a motive for murder because everybody's had a thousand lifetimes to learn to hate each other. Even the islanders' worship of the gods they've based their entire lives around isn't safe. They've spent millennia plotting to revive dead chthonic gods and yet are forbidden from contacting those same gods and are just as often nearly ruined by them as they are blessed. As Lady Love Dies is reminded at almost every turn by anyone wanting to sass at her, it was one of those very gods they hold in such high regard that got her thrown into purgatory, and the game doesn't ever make any distinction between which ones are good and which ones will kill everyone. Paradise is presented as a modern-day Olympus, but it is a dysfunctional wreck, always teetering a few precarious mistakes from utter collapse, and its inhabitants are a crew of rats on a ship that's been sinking for a millennia. They plot, backstab, and kill each other on the regular, but the one thing they'll never do is admit that it's over, that a couple dozen people that run this society will never return to their former glory days. They will be rats on an island, biting each other for control of what little they have left until the end of time and ruining just about everybody else's life along the way. That's all all they've done for the past millennium, and it's all they'll do for the millennium to come. What? Got it. And all of that produces a very specific vibe you won't find elsewhere in the medium. There's a true epic scope to all the world building. In remarkably few words, Paradise Killer paints a surprisingly vivid picture of a time and place where truly awe-inspiring feats were commonplace and forces beyond imagination engaged in titanic clashes across the earth. But seeing these paranoid, unhappy wrecks plotting in circles and still swearing the old gods will return millennia later is kind of like finding out Jesus reincarnated as a washed-up rock star that's spending his 60s perpetually in Margaritaville. There are exceptionally few characters that I like as actual people in Paradise Killer, but they are one and all compelling train wrecks of neuroses and ancient feuds to behold.
And it's a good thing that the writing and characters are also fascinating, because gameplay-wise, Paradise Killer is about as straightforward and simple as games come. You go around talking up potential suspects, you go down the list of every dialogue option you have with each one, and every once in a while you find some evidence that'll really make someone squirm. If you get stuck, you can always socialize with someone enough that they'll eventually just hand you a clue the easy way. But Paradise Killer is also an open-world game, for both good and ill. For ill, because Paradise Killer's world is utterly covered in random collectibles and is always tempting you away from its case to go find diamonds in the bushes. I didn't even get to start questioning my primary suspect for almost three hours because I was too busy getting sidetracked by every pointless but shiny item they dumped in my path every ten feet. And I can't say any of those items, even the ones that triggered random 30-second cutscenes, ever did much to pique my interest, but they were making a weird static sound that appealed to my lizard brain, so here I am wasting time digging through some gotcha machine anyway. All of this is perfectly functional, but it's not really what to come to the game for. Other titles have mechanically executed the actual process of investigating a lot better. There's the occasional hacking minigame or point-and-click style environmental puzzle, but for the most part, Paradise Killer just ping-pongs you between different characters like an errand boy, following up on whatever dirt they all keep trying to fling at each other as you click your way through every dialogue option in an inevitable conclusion. You don't even get to do your own gotcha moments. Lady Love Dies does all the hard work of catching her suspects in a lie herself, though you do occasionally get the chance to choose what tone you take with another character. All the same, the open world does still have one great benefit in how it decentralizes its storytelling. You start the game with a half dozen plot threads to follow, and those threads quickly start exploding into a dozen more, each implicating another individual in the big conspiracy to kill the rulers of Island 24. This is the primary way Paradise Killer makes you feel like an investigator, by letting you choose which leads to follow up on. The actual investigation has very little interactivity to speak of, but instead your primary form of interaction is to decide which theories hold up weight. Does mysterious missing person KHX's disappearance have something to do with the idol he's obsessed with, or is he just an incel and a one-sided obsession and the whole thing is a dead end? Did Yuri actually kill the council, as evidenced by a bunch of flower petals that put him near the scene of the crime with incriminating murder equipment, or were the flowers planted by somebody else? You decide! And then you get to argue it in court. Which leads into the one thing I unfortunately can't talk about, Paradise Killer's coup de grace, The Trial. At the end of your run, once you've gathered all of your evidence, you can actually carry out your own prosecution. Paradise Killer has this system where you can accuse any of the plot's dozen characters, and you can find enough evidence to reasonably pin it on any one of them. The real question will always be, however, if you actually got the right person. As Paradise Killer is fond of saying, uh, The facts and the truth are not the same. And that's a really unique concept, but five hours in, of course, I'm still in evidence gathering mode, having not even unlocked the dang scene of the crime because it's behind a bunch of magic barriers you're supposed to spend all game working to break through. It's a bit of a glaring gap in my review that I can't say anything about what's ostensibly one of the game's main selling points, but I have so little evidence that triggering a trial would be pointless. And the fact that you won't see it until numerous hours into the game is worthwhile information in its own right. Which brings us smoothly to the big question. What do you get out of five hours with Paradise Killer? You can technically trigger the trial I just mentioned early if you just want to see what happens, but if you're looking to actually do your job right, there's no way you'll have all your facts lined up enough in five hours to put forth an even halfway decent case. My opening five hours with Paradise Killer have been highly enjoyable, and I'm certainly going to keep working at this one, but this isn't a game you can get much out of by only playing the first half. There are too many plot threads I've only just started picking up, too many half-formed theories on who done it. heck, even some of the main characters I haven't gotten around to talking to yet. It's no 60-hour epic by any stretch of the imagination, but all the same, you're gonna need more time with this one. But I don't want to downplay how enjoyable the time I have spent with Paradise Killer has been. While Paradise Killer might not have the most engaging mechanics for following its breadcrumb trail of clues, that doesn't make the breadcrumb trail itself any less interesting to explore. Overall, Paradise Killer is a pretty enjoyable game with fantastic world building, a wide cast of entertaining characters, and a singular aesthetic that is to die for. And if you like what you're seeing here, consider supporting me on Patreon. With your generous support, I could start doing all kinds of cool stuff, like more in-depth video essays and five-hour streams where I review games like this in real time. So if any of that sounds cool, please consider becoming a patron today. But I hope you enjoyed this first five review. Thanks for watching this far, and I'll see you all next week.